Welcome to Diversity Matters. This program is designed to highlight the diversity-related activities throughout New Hanover County Schools and the greater Wilmington region. I'm Valida Quattlebaum, Chief Communications Officer for New Hanover County Schools. The month of May is Asian American and Pacific Island Heritage Month. According to the Census Bureau data published in 2016, Asians have been the fastest growing racial group in the United States since the year 2000. 2017 estimates put the population at about 21 million or about 6.5% of the U.S. population. In this episode, we'll be speaking with Asian American and Pacific Island students from Hager High School, as well as our Mandarin teacher at the International School at Gregory. We'll take a look at stereotypes, representation, and cultural diversity among the Asian American community. At the end of this episode, we hope we will all have a better understanding, perspective, and cultural awareness of those within today's Asian American community. This is going to be a very engaging and educational edition of Diversity Matters. And I can't wait to hear from our guests. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this short break. This song was created with heartbeats of children in need. Find out how it can help frontline health workers bring hope to millions of children at everybeatmatters.org. Welcome back to Diversity Matters. I'm Valida Quattlebaum. This month, we're celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. My first guest is Ms. Stella Lee, who's a Mandarin teacher at the International School of Gregory. Ms. Lee, welcome to Diversity Matters. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been teaching with us. Uh, I have been teaching for eight years in my life and this is my third year in Wilmington Gregory International School. And I teach, English, uh, I teach Mandarin mm -hmm. as a special teacher okay. for middle school students. Okay, and, and how is that for you? How do you uh, like that? I do like it very much. Okay. I'm so glad uh, the district has the Mandarin classes offered to students so yeah. I, I can be able to be here and my students uh, would be able to take my class. Excellent. And tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from. I'm from, I'm original from China. Okay. Yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So um, how do our students do with learning Mandarin? How, is it difficult for them or um, how do they take to it basically? Uh, first of all, I want to say Mandarin is a very hard language because compared to English, English is more like alphabet mm -hmm. and Mandarin is more like pictographic. So uh, while the students are learning the language, they are learning the pronunciation and also the characters. That's the most difficult part, most challenging part for beginners is to memorize those characters because in English you have certain amount of letters and your words are made of those letters but in Chinese we have thousands, countless of characters they need to memorize so they sh could be able to read and write. This is the first challenge and the second part is the grammar because the two languages are totally into different language systems so the grammar is totally different. Totally different. So when kids are um, learning the language, they need to memorize the characters and also they need to um, learn the new grammar. That's the most difficult part for students to learn the language, but I'm glad they are very interested in the language er, and they are willing to put effort in learning the language. So, okay. yeah. And you were saying in China, mm -hmm. it's mandatory. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Learning English is mandatory. Yes, in well, China, like, um, all students have to take a second language and it is English. Like we are, uh, we need to start to learn English at least from middle school. 
and we need to pass English tests to be able to go to high school and to, ab to be able to go to university. And also in universities, you have to pass certain tests to be able to get your degree. English test. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we're, our country is sort of just catching up with being bilingual and multilingual. Is that correct? Uh, yes, but in China, we don't have options. We have to learn English. Like, for example, if you want to learn Japanese, you mm -hmm. have to learn English and Japanese. I see. You, or Spanish. You mm -hmm. can't just study Spanish. You mm -hmm. must learn English. Yes, but here, kids have more choices right. about the second language. Right. Mm -hmm. They can choose Spanish. French, Mandarin, and a lot of other languages. Okay. And what about the culture? Do the students learn about Chinese culture, and have they embraced that? Yes, they do. Like, um, when, when we are learning the language, it's like, naturally, automatically, we are inside the culture. Um, and I'm glad my kids are very interested in my culture. Like, at the beginning, they are very curious about Chinese culture, because mm -hmm. as far as I know, I'm the only one Mandarin teacher in this district so far. So uh, they have a lot of questions for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, they, they've seen a lot of things on internet, and they want to check with me if mm -hmm. they are true. And I'm glad they asked me so I can, as an educator, as a an cultural exchange teacher, mm -hmm. it's my responsibility to tell them my culture, to teach them, and to eliminate. Uh, Made it right. the culture discrimination. What aspect of the culture are the students interested in? Um, like the food. No, of course, the food. Yes, right. like uh, everyone loves Chinese food. Yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> and also um, the clothing, the mm -hmm. traditional part, the history, mm -hmm. and also the music. Um, during the class, sometimes I show them the Chinese music, the traditional Chinese music with mm -hmm. the traditional Chinese instrument, and also the more modern part of the music. So they get to know both parts. And also, they are very interested in art, too. Like, we did a lot of projects about art. Mm -hmm. um, Chinese art? Yes. Mm -hmm. They study artists, various artists, or how do they do that? Mm, like, for example, um, we learn when we were learning Chinese opera, mm -hmm. like we did the design of the opera masks. Oh my! And mm -hmm. also, um, we did a, a lot like traditional chi Chinese culture. We use brush to write characters, mm -hmm. and the way we write is different than nowadays how we write. So we use brush Chinese brushes to to write, write the letters, the characters. Yeah, to mm -hmm. write the characters, and we also do Chinese painting. Mm -hmm. Yes, and also we learn something about Chinese. Uh, porcelain, like the china. Porcelain? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. The, yes, mm -hmm. and then we do a design of that too. And I also show them some of the pictures. I've been traveling a, a, a lot here, like some pictures. I Sometimes I go to museums, I take pictures of the Chinese part mm -hmm. from the museum, like the mat. And so I'll show my students. So that's that. excellent. They're learning this from a, um, a person who's actually from China. Yeah. So tell me, why is it important? Can you help us understand why is it important for our students to learn Chinese? Um, it's very important for students to start to learn Chinese as a second language. Right. First, it's another, um, it's another language. While they are learning this language, it opens their minds. Yes. Like they see more things. They see a broader view of the world. I'm yes. Sure, right? mm -hmm. And also, I, I'm sure it de helps to develop the language part of their brain. Mm -hmm. So, in the same time, it will be easier for while they are learning another language, um, it will be easier for them to accept new things mm -hmm. and to understand new stuff. Right. That's what I think. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, as far as careers, in terms of um, our global economy, mm -hmm. you know, um, trading. I know we have some trade issues right now, but <laughs> hopefully that won't always be the case. And so, with trading and um, any careers involved with international aspects of the world. Yes, I think. Um, yes, that part is very important too. First of all, I know a lot of uh, good universities here. They have programs like the students can apply, so they can study part in the United States and part in China. And I mm -hmm. know some of the students are willing to do that because they want to learn, um, they want to have their college experience in two countries. This is the first part 
would be very important if they know the language. Okay. And the second part, as the world is being more and more globalized. Right, through so the I, internet and everything. Yes, mm -hmm. and all, I think there are more and more international companies, mm -hmm. like as you mentioned, like the trading right. between the two countries. Right. Um, so I think it will be very important if no, they know the language, it will help them about that career in that part, the trading part, okay. yeah, business right. part. Mm -hmm. So um, how, what about this has been rewarding for you, teaching at Gregory, teaching Mandarin? What, can you tell us some of the rewarding aspects of doing this job? Yes, yeah, sure. Like I still remember like three years, two and a half years before when I first came here, I'm the only one Chinese you're teacher. the only Chinese teacher in the district, right? Yes, right. like okay. in public school. In right. The, yes. When I came here, uh, I have morning duties every morning. <laughs> yes. So when kids see me, they will say hola to me. Because they That only, means hello? Yeah, that means hello in Spanish. In Spanish. Yes. Hola. Because, okay. because um, before I came, the, I think for some younger kids, the only foreign language they know is Spanish. So they expect or people from other countries speak Spanish. Okay. And now, after three years, now kids come to me, they will say, Ni hao, zao shang hao. They know I'm from China, and the, even they didn't take my class, they know they need to greet me in, in Mandarin. Wow, yes, that's wow. the very, that's the, how to say, the most reward part, oh, I feel. I'm so glad. I'm yes, so glad. and I the kids will come to me and just say hi, mm -hmm. ni hao in Mandarin to me. That mm -hmm. Also my students, like, um, I have a group of students. When I, when I came here, there are sixth graders. Now they are eighth graders, so they like. They still connect with you. Yes, and they that, stay that's with me. Obviously because you're a great teacher, and I'm so glad that you're here with New Hanover County Schools, and I wish I had much longer to talk to you, but. Um, we have to take a break right now. So this is an amazing program and opportunity for our students over at Gregory. We're very fortunate to have Ms. Lee leading the program there and opening up our students to Chinese culture and the language, of course. Next, we'll be joined by some Asian American students who attend Harvard High School, and we'll hear how they feel about their representation and the cultural awareness of their ethnicity. Please stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Start your day with New Hanover County Schools, The Morning Show. This Rise and Shine program will put a smile on your face and a spring in your step. Best of all, you'll start the day a little smarter. The Morning Show features an exciting six-hour mix of exclusive features, cooking, entertainment, news, science, math, and more. New Hanover County Schools, The Morning Show, educating all viewers to achieve today and tomorrow in a global community. Only on this channel. Welcome back to Diversity Matters. Joining us now are two students from Harvard High School. We have Sarthak Mishra and Daniel O. Oh. Thank you both for being with us. Yeah, no thank problem. you for having us. Okay, so would you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, you know what year you're in and also what ethnicity you identify with? You can go. Uh, so I'm a senior at Harvard and Asian, but my ethnicity is Korean. Okay. Okay, and, and what languages do you speak, Daniel? So I speak Korean as language and English as my first or most comfortable language. Okay. Yeah, okay. and I'm, I'm Sarthak. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a f freshman at Harvard, and uh, I'm Indian, also Asian, obviously, mm -hmm. and uh, I speak Hindi, Odia, and English. Uh, Odia is a language of my state in India, so each uh, state in India has its own language, so that's another language I speak. Okay, so that's fascinating. I'm sure most people don't know that different states in India have different and languages. languages. And then that is split up into smaller dialects. Wow, okay, okay. So, uh, in your opinion, what are some of the biggest issues facing Asian Americans today? Uh, so I think affirmative action's a big one, you know, when you're applying for college, a lot of universities try to keep a uh, diverse uh, class of class of 2022, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so they want a certain number of uh, Asian, certain number of uh, Caucasian, certain number of African Americans. But because so many Asians apply and they have really good resumes, 
uh, historically have really good resumes, they have higher expectations for Asians. So in a sense, it's Asians are competing against Asians, and it's really hard. It's harder on the Asians to get into the dream school they want to get into versus a uh, typical other race. Okay. What do you think about that, Daniel? Um, I, I agree with that, definitely, mm -hmm. especially when you're applying to schools, the top schools such as Harvard. Mm -hmm. And what I think is... Now, where are you going to school? Uh, I'm going to Chapel Hill. Right. Okay. So you got into one of the top schools, <laughs> so that's great. Mm -hmm. But then uh, one of the problems I feel like Asian Americans face is that we're in kind of the middle ground in terms of ethnicities in America. What do you mean by that? We're not completely seen as a minority or discriminated against race, mm -hmm. but then we're not like white people. Mm -hmm. So if you look in comedy or media, like you can see how like people like Steve Harvey even made, like last year made a racist joke towards Asians, right. thinking it's funny, mm -hmm. but then that kind of made, that kind of uh, confuses me where the standings are for the races where you can't make fun of certain races or you can joke with some, some other races and that kind of put me in a kind of identity crisis to where we stand in society today. I see. And so let's talk about stereotypes. Mr. Harvey and his jokes aside. <laughs> so um, what stereotypes do you face, if any, that you feel as a, um, a Korean student? Um, being an East Asian, mm -hmm. uh, I get confused a lot with other East Asian countries where right. ever since elementary and middle school, I've been always asked whether I was Chinese or Japanese. Mm -hmm. and in elementary school, not many kids know what Korea is, right. especially since back then Korea wasn't in the news every day like it is now. Mm -hmm. So I would always, on the bus, I would always be asked, are you Chinese, are you Japanese, are you Asian even? So in a derogatory way, not in a just but want it, to be it friends. Was like, mm -hmm. Is that I what you're saying? I think it was more so of ignorance rather than trying to be mean. Awesome. But mm -hmm. having that asked every day by every single person mm -hmm. took, like, was very stressful as a child. Right. That took its toll. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you? Yes, yeah, same thing. Ms. You know, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, uh, you're Indian, right? So uh, my friend Jack is also Chinese. Uh, and he's, he says, so Jack is Asian and you're Indian. But in the end, you know, Asi I'm still Asian. A lot right. of people get that mixed up. And I think it was... And New Hanover County has done a good job about this, or at least the students have. They're mm -hmm. not really derogatory, but mm -hmm. it's just a lot of confusion mixed up. They right. don't, they don't right. understand, so they're asking it in an informative way, you know, uh, if right. we can give a good answer to them. I'm glad but, to hear you say that um, students here, that we've made some progress with that. And that's why we have this show, actually. Yeah. And that's why we teach what we teach, to try to, because people don't know sometimes. They're not yeah. trying to be mean exactly. or right, rude. They just don't know. Yeah, so and then if like, you're willing to educate, that's good. Yeah, and then when I was little, for example, you know, it was easier for me to explain. But when I get older, mm -hmm. because it got more repetitive, like Daniel said, it, it sometimes it gets annoying. And a lot of times, uh, the same person who asked you maybe a couple of weeks ago will ask you again. Then, <laughs> Like, did then, you care? I yeah, told yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's where the ignorance mm -hmm. comes in. Like, uh, do you actually care about uh, right. the question? Right, what I said, yeah. right. Okay. And um, do you feel that there are a lot or a small number of Asian Americans here in Wilmington and has that influenced your social circle, like who you hang out with and so forth? Um, there's definitely a small number of Asian Americans I feel in Wilmington, mm -hmm. especially since it's more of a suburban town than a rural or a urban city. And um, what I think that how that affected my social circle is it definitely did because I couldn't relate to many people at first mm -hmm. since I'm an immigrant my parents don't know anything about American culture so I didn't know a lot of the old like music that everyone's parents showed their children or right. like you didn't grow up little, with Motown yeah. <laughs> right. but then I hear all these things like now and like of course I knew Beatles at the least but mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot of the other ones okay what about yeah. you uh, so uh, could you repeat the question one more time? Yes, I was wondering, um, 
if the small amount of Asian Americans here has affected your social circles? Yes, I think there's a small number of Asians, uh, specifically Indian. Mm -hmm. I know the Chinese community is a lot bigger than the Indian community in Wilmington. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we've done a great job of including everyone. Uh, but friend groups at school, you know, through elementary and middle school, there wasn't that many. But at Hoggard, you know, it's gotten bigger. The friend group has gotten bigger. And then I'm on a robotics team, which they have a lot of uh, Indians and uh, Asians. So it's, or Indians are Asian, but a lot of Indians, Chinese. Right. Um, so it's really, it's a lot easier to make uh, friends, Asian friends in high school rather than middle school or elementary school. Good, good. I think high school, school gets easier as you go along anyway. Yeah. Good. So good luck to you both. Thank you. So we will um, take a break and we'll be right back. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky, but, but he's, he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. Mom! Mom! See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back to Diversity Matters. Joining us now, we have two more students from Hogger High School, Seisha Patel and Sata Blue. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for mm -hmm. having us. Yeah. So could you please uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, what ethnicity you represent and, um, and uh, what languages you speak? Um, I'm Seisha and I'm Indian. And uh, languages, I speak Gujarati, which is a Indian state language. And I also speak Hindi, which is the national language of India, and then English. Wow, so you speak three languages. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wow, okay. And my name is Sata Blue. Mm -hmm. I'm from Hoggard. And um, I was born in Thailand. And the languages I speak are, um, I speak English and Karen. Okay. K-A-R-E-N. Okay. Karen. All right, thank you so much. So let's jump right into it. And um, tell me, have you experienced discrimination since you've been here or at Hogwarts or in Wilmington, can you and can you give me an example? So I feel like everyone deals with discrimination at yes, some point in their life. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, but definitely, it's gotten easier. I'd say it's you get more used to it as you grow up. You feel more comfortable. But like when I was younger, it was harder because like you would bring different food to school or you'd be interested in different things just because of your House, home environment. Mm -hmm. um, so that was definitely harder, but you just learn to find your place and where you belong. Right. So, right. Yeah. Well, good. We found your place. You feel? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. How about you, Sata? Uh, I agree with her. Like when I was younger, mm -hmm. it would I would do more of my culture things, like, and then as I got older, and like high school has been the year that I've hanging out with more people. Like, all, all diverse people. Yeah, all diverse, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. And you're an athlete? Can yeah. you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, uh, yeah. I play soccer at Hoggard, and uh, I've been playing for three years now, freshman, sophomore, and my junior year. And going into senior year, I'm going to also play. But, um, yeah, I've been playing soccer for a while. and That broadens hopefully. your circle, too, right? Yeah. Right. They like there are a lot more people that I hang out with. Good. And Stacia, you, what are your extracurricular activities? Um, I play piano and I'm in Girl Scouts, so. Excellent. I love the Girl Scouts. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about political, um, political arena. We um, have studied and see that Asian Americans are gaining political power in the United States. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, um, we've had more Asian Americans in Congress than that we've ever had. Do you think this trend will continue and why? You all are the future voters. Mm -hmm. Soon you'll be voting. I think this is a great trend that we've seen and I definitely think it'll continue. Um, Asian Americans are just, they're getting more comfortable in leadership positions mm -hmm. and people are starting to be more accepting of um, Asian Americans in political roles. Uh, so I think it's a great 
change and will bring a diverse perspective okay. into the government. Right, into our nation. Mm -hmm. So, and let's bring it down to the city of Wilmington. Do you think our city embraces your culture? Do you find that you have places to go here that represent your culture and activities? So, in Wilmington, um, there is definitely um, a small Indian population just mm -hmm. due to the uh, overall size and everything, right. but um, I'm involved in the Cape Fear Cultural Association of India and so it's like all the Indians in Wilmington will come together and celebrate their diversity and culture together. Okay, so see I never heard of that. Say mm -hmm. the name of it again. Uh, it's CFCAI, which is the Cape Fear Cultural Association of India. Excellent. Um, right, so we have okay. events and everything. And good, mm -hmm. good, good, good. So, um, Sata, do you think that um, New Hanover County Schools supports you as a student of Asian American descent? Yeah, I, st I think they support us, mm -hmm. but it was actually when I was younger, mm -hmm. like when I came here, they had ESL for me. So, you know, they taught me how to speak and like it really helped me. Right. Because now, like, I, now I know how to speak very well. And um, it was all throughout the elementary school year mm -hmm. where I actually had ESL. And now I think ESO is still helping a lot of oh it is not just Asian but right. it's one of our other best cultures. and strongest programs our ESO yep. and I'm so glad you mentioned that thank you for yep, that yes, yeah and um, what can the district do to be more supportive of you you think is there anything you think that we can do um, definitely just like clubs and everything I know Hoggard had a cultural fair this year right. um, and so just things like that just making everyone feel welcome right. and involved. Um, that was a big success, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. I worked so. with Travis Matthews to help promote that to okay. people. So you, did you enjoy it? Uh, yes. Good, good, good. A lot of dancing. How about you, Sata? Uh -huh. Is there anything you think our school system can do to help? I mean, you all are on your way out and you yeah. are successful and we're glad. But what can we do to help the students coming behind you be successful like you are, feel comfortable and feel welcomed, because that's what we want. I, um, I guess just have like, yeah, like a club, like, right. like an Asian club. Right. So mm -hmm. like the Asian people can get to hang out sometimes. Do you think if we had an Asian club at the schools that students would participate in and support it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I would go. Right, you yeah. can start it, y'all can start yeah. it, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you would like to share? that you want people to know about you, your culture? Um, I think just be accepting of everyone mm -hmm. and um, take differences in a good way. Right. Don't let them divide you. Right, mm -hmm. don't be so afraid of each other, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. What about you, Sato? Anything you want, well, this is your moment to tell the world, what do you want people to know? Uh, like, you know, we want people not to be ignorant and uh, be kind. What do you want? I know what I want. I want people to accept me as a woman, a woman of color. I want to be free to live and grow like everybody else. What do you want? Um, yeah, I'd say just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Just be who you are and then just let the people love you for who you are. Right, That's what, right. Yep. And you are. No matter the color. No matter the color, the culture, the ethnicity, the languages. Love yep. us, right? Mm -hmm. Right, great, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for being here and telling us about your unique experience. You have provided great insight to our whole community about Asian Americans here in Wilmington and in New Hanover County Schools. New Hanover County Schools is working to improve equity and diversity related issues in all facets of the district. And that's why we highlight diversity on this show. You're welcome to call the New Hanover County Schools Public Relations Department at 910 254-4245 if you have any questions or if you have a story idea for a future edition of this show. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next month with an all new edition of Diversity Matters.